Lord God, just thank you for this time, Lord God. And a place to meet. It may not be as fancy, but Lord God, it's where we can open up the Word of God and not be harassed. And Lord, may we open up the Word of God in truth to honor the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the Word. Lord, for Jesus' sake we pray. Amen. So, John chapter 1. In verse 1, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him. Without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in darkness, and darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to hear the bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. He was not that light but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. And that's where we left off last week. We Nine verses, we got much information. And we looked at last week that when a man is born, he's given light about God and Jesus Christ's salvation. He gives light about a creator, not evolution. you got to be taught out of that. And in verse 9, we see that this was the true light. Now, we've been talking about John, verse 6. That capital L is important. Because when you run over to Corinthians, there's a small L, and that's Satan. Which light is every man that cometh into the world. So the focus is off John the Baptist. The man. Human man. Sinner. And the focus is on that light. Again, every man that cometh into the world has a light of Jesus Christ. God is no respecter of persons of sex, age, race, or creed. Only way that God will deal with somebody is if you continue to believe or if you reject. That's God's action. Amen. You want more light? You believe the light you've been shown? You get more. You get light, you say, no, I don't want that. That's too bright. I'm sorry. I'd rather get my religion. I'd rather get my science. I'd rather believe you're not God. And God's okay, fine. So, Luke 2.32. The Gospel of Luke 2.32. And it's amazing that God so loved the world that He, God, gives us a revelation of who He is even before our understanding. Now, I've been through 12 years of public school education. And I've got in my mind, I know God created everything, but I got that thought in the back of my head, you know, the Big Bang. My mind has been perverted. Children of school age have been perverted. But when you're young and you don't realize anything yet, you're in kindergarten, first grade, you can look up in the sky and say, you know what? Somebody big made that. Amen. Wow. Something. And you may not even understand. And that's what we're talking about. Luke 2.32. Luke 2.32. It says, A light to lighten the Gentiles, and the glory of thy people Israel. So that light is also manifested to Gentiles. The foreknowledge of God, God knows already that Israel is going to reject the Messiah. He knows that they're going to say, crucify him, crucify him, and have him nailed to that cross and not stop him. They know through the book of Acts, they're going to kill Stephen. They're going to persecute Paul. They're going to kill uh, James. And every one of the disciples but John, the subject of our gospel, had died a violent death. God already knew that. He knew... For the fact is that we get in as Gentiles, that's a stumbling block to Israel. The fact is that we believe on Jesus Christ, their Messiah, their Jewish Messiah. That's supposed to make the Jews say, who do you think you are? You know who I think I am? I'm a child of God by your Amen. Messiah, by your Savior. That's who I am. And I'm going to go to Israel. I'm going to go. Listen, you get an opportunity for me to meet a Jew, I'm going to tell them about Jesus. And that would upset them. So the Gentiles have that light. 2 Corinthians 4, 6. Let's 
2 Corinthians 4, 6. Second Corinthians 4, 6. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness. Now you say, why isn't that light capitalized? Because... You are looking at Jesus Christ, yes, but you're also looking at the Gospel in writing. It's not particularly just that man, Jesus, that the Jews saw, but it's also Jesus, the Word of God. When I preach the Gospel, for God, I mean, for God's sake, Jesus Christ suffered and died, according to the Scriptures, was buried and rose again the third day, according to the Scriptures. That's the one and same Jesus Christ. Verse 6, to shine out of darkness. There's that light in darkness. There's that light in darkness. You cannot have a gray area when it comes to salvation. Has shined in our hearts. With the heart man believes unto righteousness. It's not head. Evolution teaches head to the kids in school. Now learn this. Get this down. You're going to be tested on these stages of the rocks and these stages of the dinosaurs. And yet, with God, it's it's in our heart. It's in our conscience. It is there. We can't see it. We have never seen Jesus Christ. We've never seen the creation days of Genesis 1. And yet, with our heart, we believe it as much as a person will believe in the beginning, the Big Bang. To give the light of knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Now again, the contrast is there are people with knowledge, they think, of dinosaurs and there was life on Mars, there was life shown up on Pluto, there was, you know, we found these bones in the ground and it speaks that man is fighting. Us. See, that's a knowledge. But that's not the knowledge of Jesus Christ. That's not the knowledge of salvation. I have a knowledge of the holy. I have the knowledge of, I'm saved and know it. I know who God is. Amen. I know what the Word of God says. Not, no, I don't mean completely 100%. But there are things in here that if I were to show a scientist that Job spoke about the earth hanging on nothing. And yet there are, there are people out there that thought it was on the back of a church. There are people today unbelievably still believe the earth is flat. And yet the Bible says it's a circle. It's a circle. So I have knowledge through the Word of God. What man doesn't have knowledge that he can put on a wall and say, look how in brilliant I am. And that light, and that comes from God. By belief. John 12, 46. John 12, 46. And there's so much about light because that is the aspect of man. A man comes up to you like we had the other day. Oh, you can't say the kingdom of God. Your lights are out. You don't know nothing. Don't tell me. And somebody comes up and says, you know, I just like what you're doing. It's so interesting. They've got light. So John 12, 46. I am come a light. Now see, there's that, there's that little L. That's because he's speaking. That's because, that's, he's not referring as a light. He says, I am come a light. And that's, in the middle of the night, what do you do? You turn the light on to see. And it's a revelation that Christ is eliminated, uh, not eliminate us that we can see. Because many of us are in darkness. I am come a light. Now why a light? What did Corinthians say about the devil? He professes and he transforms himself into an angel of light. He is a light too, but artificial. And many that will follow that lighted path will end off into a place of darkness we've already talked about. So there's two lights out there. There's the heavenly light, and there's the devilish light. I have come a light. Which one do you want to believe? you got an option. Into the world, that whosoever believes on me should not abide in darkness. 
So the light of Jesus Christ is able to remove you out of that darkness. Now, I'm saved. I'm washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. I'm not in darkness. I may sin because I'm still in the flesh, but I'm a child of God and I have, I have that light. And I will never walk in the darkness that a lost man walks in. I'm incapable. And that light is salvation. 1 John 4, 9. Hey, come back read. I know. And then storm. 1 John 4. Okay, now I won't open my Bible. <laughs> See, we've got to learn to realize, and we all know this. You're not going to get a, you're not going to get around in the middle of the night in your living room without any light. You're going to hit something. Mm -hmm. Okay, how long? You're going to hit something. And we we got to realize when we look at man and he, without God, without Jesus Christ, they are walking that same black path of unsurety. And if you were to ask anybody of religion, say, do you know for sure when you die, absolutely sure without a doubt of shadow of death, you're going to go to heaven? And they cannot answer you yes. And if they do, they're lying. Only the Word of God says, these things have I written unto you, John, 1 John speaks, that you may know you have eternal life. I know I have eternal life because the lights are on. And Jesus is home. And 1 John 4... That's just weird how it's written. Let's see what it says. In this was manifested, make known, the love of God towards us because that God sent His only begotten Son into the world. Now Christ said, I am become a light in the world that whosoever believeth, then you get the love of God. Now you got a contrast. You've got a problem. There are people out there who say God hates the sin, but loves the sinner. And that is absolutely incorrect. The Bible says, for God so loved past tense. And when we read this verse here, and it was manifested the love of God towards us, because that God sent His only begotten Son, Jesus, into the world, that light, that we may live through Him. Here is love, not that we love God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiatory, propitiatory, prop, I want to say, propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought to love one another. That love of Calvary is, I mean, that love of God is Calvary. You walk away from Calvary without belief, there's no more love. Now you walk away from Calvary and believe you are not only loved by God, you are adopted by God, you receive the Holy Spirit, and that's light. And when you start reading your Bible, I a woman on my Facebook page, she's going through the book of Mark, and she's just excited how wonderful the Bible is. And that's light. When you can read through the Bible, and I don't know how many times I've read through the Bible, and you go through it again, like last week, Lord's is showing me scriptures that were not in my notes. And that's exciting. And that's light. As you sit here at this ugly-looking picnic table out in the open that people won't join us because it's just so miserable. It's not a church with AC or stained glass windows. And you say, wow, that guy is, man, he's teaching. I'm learning. That's not me. That's the light of That's Jesus right. Christ. That's the light of the book. And it's wonderful. Revelation 22, 5. And that is also the love of God. God's sitting back, hey, watch this. And be like a father or a mother to their children. Let me show you something that you've never seen before. You know, the mother's making cookies and and you're like, can I help? And she gives him the blender and he learns how to use that blender. Well, oh, wow, this is fun. And then you, you take the blender tips off and you let him lick it. 
Hey, wow, this is good. And this is what God's doing. Hey, here's how to use the Bible. Here's how to read the Bible. Now just start licking. Lick that frosting. Lick that batter. Did not, did not Ezekiel or Jeremiah say, I have eaten the Word of God? And Job says, above necessary my food, the Word of God. 22.5. And there was to be no night there. They need no candle, neither the light of the sun. For the Lord God giveth them light. They shall reign forever and ever. We are going to a city called New Jerusalem, and there will be no sun. There will be no moon. He said, well, how are we going to gang around? Huh? We don't walk in darkness no more, Jesus said. Get your eyes off this world and look to Jesus, the blessed hope, and you're just like, you're going to a place that God's going to like the place. You're going to such a place, and there will be no boxes, but we use this as an illustration. You get yourself a wooden crate, and you get yourself some caulking. Have somebody put you in that wooden crate, fasten it down, nail it down, and caulk the, the seams of that crate. And there'll be still light. How? There's no darkness in the city of New Jerusalem ever again. Why? Satan and all have been cast out. And from Jesus Christ, the light that we're reading about now, the capital L, He and God is going to light up all eternity. There'll be no night, no darkness, no shadow. Forever. And we won't get sunburned. We won't need suntan lotion. There'll be no worshiping Baal, the sun god. It'll be all worshiping Jesus Christ. So when, uh, what the, how they say, the little light of mine, yeah, but the greater light to come. So every man is born with the knowledge of God and their conscience. Your heart, as you've already seen, looks to the heavens and cry out, God, Creator. And Satan has given the American school system over to the devil by evolution. The great monkey trial. That Bible-believing, I'll say Baptist, did not do nothing to win more. And the lawyer for our side was an idiot. And because Christians sat down and didn't do nothing, the devil was allowed to go into the public school system and God was allowed to come out of the public school system and the Supreme Court said no more Bibles in the school and in our time they say no more prayer in the school and now the Christians, ah, 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 we can't, we can't. Why didn't you do something before? Why didn't you put your armor on and fight now? You say, well, but you got men in the pulpits, you got people in the pews, they're wonderful, they're great, you can't tell them wrong. Touch not in my anointed and, and do my prophets no harm. And then look at the mess we are in today. And they actually believe that today their churches are wonderful and great. And God's up in heaven, no. Revelation chapter 3. Gabriel, give me another bar fag. And I'm talking about you all the churches. Church. I'm talking about all the churches. Oh, Romans 1.18. We'd allowed Satan in the school system. And then they turn around and say, why are all these kids shooting each other? Mm. Well, you taught them doggy eats dog. I'm the biggest monkey in the banana tree. And those, monkey, mm. those monkeys need to go, and those bananas need to be mine. Survival of the fittest is why they're shooting each other. I know. And I'll tell you another reason why children are shooting each other. Children are shooting each other. Because the pharmacies have the power to sell you all their junk. Kids in trouble? Put the rod away. We don't need that Bible. Give them a pill. Give them a time out. Alright, so they go to prison. The correctional system. And there was a woman in Connecticut, and I was in the prison system, minister at that time. She went in there for bank robbery. She came out, she robbed more banks and got away with it, and they're like scratching her head. What's this with the correctional system? While she was in jail, she was with other bank robbers and learned how not to get caught. Oh. Yeah. True story. True story. Yeah. And I was, I, I was. I read it in the papers, too. 
And I was in the prison ministry and I would have happened. And it was a joke to us because it's not correction. It's a big time out. And then you come out of your corner, you're angry as hell. And you want to get revenge. So Romans 1.18 For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. So not only are we born with the light of God in Jesus Christ, we are born in our nature that there's judgment. How do you know? I just stole a cookie. Mommy's come in a room and I got to hide. Where did that come from? Mom never told you, that first time you did, Mom never told you she was going to smack you. She never told you she was going to tell Dad on you. But you know instinctively that whatever you stole, you knew it was wrong. And you knew you were supposed to, for this day and age, like I said, you were supposed to get judgment by your parents. You see, when your parents correct you, they're supposed to show you God is a corrector. Is a corrector. And you know what's you know what another thing Satan has done with this these children of America? They have no fathers. Though they don't recognize God as a father. Time out and get here, take this pill, it's time for your, your rogue and whatever it is. That's not, oh, oh, if I do this, I'm gonna get caught. Listen, the biggest thing I had growing up, and listen, I did things, I stole, I shouldn't have, done, but in the back of my mind, the conscience, I knew there was a God, I knew my mother, she found out she couldn't beat the daylights out of me. <coughs> That's a healthy. That keeps you out of the trouble. And that's not happening. And God says, I have also put into you judgment. And to remind you, all places in the world, I don't care if you're in the deepest parts of Africa or the middle place of Australia or up in the North Pole, every civilization, tribe, civilization, a city or that, they have some kind of judgment against people who do wrong. It is normally wrong in every culture for committing adultery. Now where did that come from? Man in his own rights, he wants to do wrong. And yet man establishes government and laws and rules and regulations to prevent us from doing wrong. And that's God. So God not only reveals him the light, he reveals, you know what, judgment's coming one day. And people laugh and mock and they put it out of their conscience. And they say, oh, it won't happen. And the Bible even speaks about people, well, God's forgotten us. God doesn't see us. Believe the lie. Because even Satan will be judged. 119, same Romans 119. Because that which may be known of God is manifested in them, for God has showed it unto them. It is from God. You know. And the older you get, and I'm picking on America, this is where we live. The more education you get in the educational public school systems, the more you're going away from this. But if you had a healthy part of, of religion or a Bible in your life, you know about God. Rachel has never gone through the education system that I've gone through. And she's, she's been homeschooled her whole life. She's had the Bible seven days a week. So in her heart, she knows there's a God. She acknowledged God. She's heard it all. I've never been that way. I've always had the world. I've always had God. I've always had religion. And since 1987, I've had the Bible. And there's a lot of junk up here. I'll go into a store anywhere, they got the music on the overhead. Sometimes this brain starts listening, starts singing the overhead music. That's what that's it's the filth in me. I know it's wrong. And verse 20. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. Now isn't that a contradiction? The invisible things. The atoms. You can't see an atom. That's invisible. Are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made. This, t this picnic table. I can see the picnic table, but I can't see the atoms. 
but I'm told they're there. Take a deep breath. There's oxygen. I can't see it, but it's in my lungs and comes out as carbon monoxide or one of them oxides. I don't see it, but there it is. I know it's there. I don't see it. Even his eternal power in God is so that they are without excuse. I have never seen God. But I've never seen oxygen. Though somebody will say, well, if you've never seen God, how do you know he's there? How do you know you're breathing? How do you know you have a brain? How do you know you have a brain? Yeah. Right. You've never seen it. And well, well, you know, you know, and they may say, I had one person say, well, I had an MRI, you know. How do you know that was you? I could put anything on the screen. So, the revelation of God is wonderful. No one in their life, if they never heard the Bible, no one could stand before God, the great white throne judge, and say, I never knew. And God said, listen, I put it in you. You were educated or you chose not to believe it. And that's to your damnation. And when God gives you light, receive it. Never turn it away. In 21, 121. Because that, after what we just read, when they knew God, oh, they knew Him. Did you read that? They knew Him. God comes up to you, I'm an atheist. You knew God at one time. A lot of times they're not atheists, by the way. Drill them. They're just saying it to make you shut up. Okay? I had one guy one time, he told me, that, you know, he's an agnostic. I said, really? That's kind of like atheist. I said, you just want me to shut up. Right. And leave. Said, no, I'm, I, I, I'm an agnostic. I said, okay, tell me the definition of agnostic. Uh, well, he half believes and he half doesn't believe. He's not sure. Oh, okay. But the guy did not know. The guy did not even know what an agnostic was until I taught him. Really? And he walked away believing the Bible. Tracy was there. Wow. That was at the flea market. Praise the Lord. Because that, when they knew God, they glorify Him not as God. Oh. So you can change God into something that's not God. That's a possibility. Neither were thankful to God, but became, they weren't, they became vain in their imagination. That monkey poster they got from a monkey crawling up, crawling up, and here comes man walking. I've never seen that poster where, where the fur or hair is on the ground where it fell off. And there's still all those stages of monkeys. Not one monkey has yet ever became man in, in the woods. That's right. I wrote, they had down here in uh, New Smyrna, they had one of those sea cows come up on the beach. Oh, everybody's out there, you know, trying to help the sea cow. It's men are. I wrote in the comments, I says, leave it alone, it's trying to grow legs and walk away. And they're like, you're, you're an idiot. Why did you say that? That's what evolution teaches. Sea life grew legs, walked on the beach, and walked off, and now operating a hotel. But when you tell them when there's an animal laying on the beach dying, you tell them what they believe, then they're like, oh, that's stupid. That's what you've been taught. And their foolish heart, look at it, look at it, was darkened. Why would it be darkened? Because you turned off the light, you turned off God, you turned off the Bible. You turned off from the prayers of someone that loves you. So they knew God. That's beyond a shadow of a doubt what the Bible writes. Anybody that's born knows God. How's that? Now they made, now not good, like I said, the American Indian called him the Great White Father. I didn't know that. Why didn't they call him black? Why didn't they call him the Great Great Father? Red Father. Why not red, you know, their color? Why was it the White Father? You would think that would be prejudicial White and racial. White is light. White is light. White is clean. And so some people have to say a statement that, you know, prejudice. 
There are people, I'm told, who missionaries over in Africa. They look to the heavens and there's there's a big God. Somebody up there, a big God. Now you look to the Japan or China cultures, that person is the emperor, is the, the head of their family, family worship. Russia, it's the government. It's Stalin, but it's not God. They, there is no glory to God. Stand out two months, two years, on the street corner somewhere and preach or hold signs for Jesus. And people who will come to you say, everybody loves God. No, they don't. No, that's not true. They do not glory God. Or what you're doing isn't in the Bible. And so, I know. go to I don't know I don't know what that the, the the alligator team in Florida whatever I forget I don't care and watch them go in that place all decked up all dressed up all fancy eyes big hats big hands and all like that and they look at you as an idiot and they go in there glorifying their team which is not God because there's a bunch of sinners. All has sin come short of glory to God. Right. When they go into the classroom and they want the students to worship them and call them professor because they're the one with the brains, they're the ones with the paper diploma that don't mean nothing. Look at me, it's not God. And there have been educators in those atmospheres that have told students in the classroom, if you believe in God, I will erase that belief from you by the end of this class or you're going to leave. And I've heard that testimony not once, not twice, but five times and it happens more. They in the classroom will try and will put to the service of removing God from you. So there's no glory of God. There's no thanks of God. And I spent, mentioned this several times. We're given one day by George Washington in this country to honor and thank the God that brought the pilgrims over here, took care of them. Thanksgiving. And today is hurry up. Every day. And it's like, oh, where are you going? Oh, I got to go work at this big store because they want me to work today because I got to set up now the Christmas decorations or the Fourth of July decorations. Getting worse and worse every year. Well, come on, everyone. Hurry up and eat. Just come on. Hurry up and eat because, you know, I got to go to bed. I got to wake up at 11 o'clock so I'm going to go camp out at the famous electronic store for Black Friday. And I said this before, and I'm not talking about worldly people. I'm talking about born-again, Bible-believing Christians on that Thursday when they sit down with their family. How many say, okay, let's bow our head in prayer? Be thankful for what they have, but within a couple hours, they want to go buy something that they didn't have. Well, see, that thing. Thanksgiving. Thankful for what you have. Christmas is not what I have. Gotcha. We have been in restaurants. A month later, you're upset because you didn't get what you wanted, but a month earlier, and you were thankful for New Year's Eve, you get the bill. The <laughs> Bible says be content with what you have, right? So, we have gone to restaurants, and we stand and pray as a family. We've irritated the waiter or the waitress because they want to know what kind of drink we want. And we've had people come up, put, our, oh, put arms on bad. our shoulders and say, thank you very much for doing that. They are surprised questions. that there are they people as a family. They still do that. They still do that. And we actually sit and we talk to each other at an, an outing dinner without everybody having electronic going. <laughs> You're out to dinner with your family and every member that's sitting at a table, we're in shock. Looking around at all the tables and everybody's like this. That's, the, old, well, that's the great God. That, why, so. why didn't you even bother going out to dinner together? That's the great God today is those phones. I know, it's, it's sad, but it's true. It's and the Bible speaks about your hands making it. And then we have vain became vain. Vain is empty. There's no nothing to it. Those statues, aids of worship, those magazines, those incense burning, those crossing your legs, those voting, because voting is a god in America. The football, the baseball, the credit card, they're all vain because one day they're all going away. And they will not stand at the judgment of God, but you, you will. You leave this world the same way you came into it. Naked. That's only, naked with nothing. There's only one thing you can take with you when you go. One thing. Lost souls. Yep. That's That's people you've won to the Lord. That's it. That's all you can take. That's all I will. You will never have a, a U-Haul. Be be cool. There is no U-Haul returns in New Jerusalem. Oh. you got to leave them behind. 
I don't know if I can say you all. You can't take your stuff with you or your And then it says vile thoughts, vile imaginations. Vile. That's wicked. That's filthy. You know, we are in a world today most filthy thoughts that people can do to children. Wickedness. And they find on these computers of these people and people who are in politics, and people who are in sports, and people who are honored with ball cards and, Educators. and posters. And mm. I want to get your, your autograph in the filth they find. Mm. It's imagination. It's getting worse. I showed Tracy the other day a picture of these people in Las Vegas that are in a pool. And, so, and here comes this mushroom crowd of testing atomic power. Way back in the 50s. Back in the 50s. That was someone's imagination. Oh. Let me make something that will kill people. That's not God. Out in like Nevada, they were test, testing the bombs while people at a hotel were jumping into a pool. It's just wickedness. And we got the foolish heart darkened. And that's what our subject of 1 John 1 9 is light. If it's darkened, there's no light. There's no light. Jesus said, I am the way. They're not walking away. Jesus says, I am the truth. They're not walking in the truth. Jesus said, I am the light. There's no light. And it's all dependent upon... And Satan is so great because he is a light. He can make people think, oh, look at me. I'm in a religion. I'm okay. Until one day when you stand before Mary and Mary comes up to testify to you against you. I'm sorry, but I was knocked away. She even says, whatever my son say, do it. says, do it. Amen. Darkened is because they rejected the light. Professing, look at 22, professing themselves. Professor. Professor. They have taken that title out of the Bible and they don't even know it. Show that one to an evolution. Uh, professor in a college, that he's there in the Bible, professing themselves to be wise. Look at me, look at my diploma. And even Baptist preachers and Baptist, whatever they are on television in seminaries, and right, go okay. out and, and try to get all these group of peoples and all that. Look at me, I've got a diploma. Call me Dr. Such and Such. And they throw it up in your face. Too. What's and the Baptist, Bible say? They're not any better than you. The, what the Bible says, professing themselves to be wise. Comma. They became fools. They became fools. Well, you, and I bet you they probably know, don't know what the word pastor means. Pastor means you got sheep. You, you got to feed them. You got to take care of them. You got to visit them. You got to go get them when they're lost. You got to put band aids or whatever they need on their wounds. You got to take all the junk out of their, what's it called? What, the fur? The wool, you gotta take all the, because that stuff, I, I'm told, it's like Velcro. You gotta look at them, you gotta care for them, you gotta pray for them. That's a pastor. Mm -hmm. I know pastors don't visit their flocks when they're in the hospital. Mm, that's, that's sad. And yet, I know pastors who, their church service is just totally nonsense, and they will go visit their people. See, you got. Here are some, here's the ingredients that God says, but I'll just put what I want into it. That's not. That's darkness. And there are idiots out there, they want the titles. Titles are not for Christians. That's right. It's because they want to Notice in our title. Title. We're called Christians. And that's in the Bible, Book of Acts, from Antioch. But who came first? Christ. That's not so with Christians today. By the way, just for Christians, I A N, I am nothing. That's the, the play on words there. So John three nineteen. It's so much about the light. Yeah, we're we're gonna start coming off the light, but we're gonna be coming back into the light. And say, for instance, right, you ask me, say, sir, do you, 
if you were to die today, I get a big smile on my face, do you know of a surety that you will go to heaven? I'll get a great, even greater smile on my face. And I'll look at that guy and say, these things have I written unto you that you may know you have eternal life. Yes, I know Jesus saved my soul. That's life. That is going down that though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Christ is the light. But I can't see that light. But I aim to Jesus, blessed hope. Now there's other people out there, well, you know, I had a near-death experience. I saw this light. Where do you ever see in the Bible that you're supposed to see any kind of light? Except Satan, who has transformed himself into a, 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 something, an angel of light. See, Satan wants you to see. But the Bible says, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Don't ever look. The day you will see Jesus is the day you die of the rapture. But right now, we live by faith. And as far as that light, John 3, 19. And Jesus is speaking. And this is the condemnation. That light is come into the world. There it is again. So there are some churches out there who get it wrong. They put that nativity scene out there and they put a light bulb for Jesus' head. That light bulb, is artificial light, represents Satan. Wrong. How's that? You see a nativity scene lit up by Jesus. Shows me that light. It's wrong. It's Satanic. The light is coming over. Yeah, Jesus was born in Bethlehem. But he didn't glow. He had no glowing powers. Light has come into the world. Thank you. And combination that light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than light. Uh oh. Not everybody loves God. Men love darkness. What's darkness? Absent from the light. Absent from God. Absent from the Word absent from the Bible. There are people out there who want to be lost. They don't want to be bothered. They don't want to hear you. Not everybody gets saved. That's a sorry fact. That's right. I, Saturday mornings. You're ruining my weekend. Oh, yeah. preaching? I had an aunt. <laughs> she was into the Mary. Did not want to hear it. Didn't want to have anything to do with it. She was Catholic, I think. Yes. And it, I'm also trying to get us to realize, and for you, Louise, as you begin going out witnessing, not everybody's going to give you a hug. Most of the time, they'll, they'll give you the finger. Or other or things. Or they give you dirty looks. I've had yep. some of that already. And no matter how dedicated you are, not all men are going to get saved. Because men love darkness them. rather than light because their deeds worry evil. Look at that. He That's puts right. in past tense. Everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. Neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. So there are people who are going to be totally in their life, in their afterlife, hopeless. No matter what you pray, there may be somebody in your family, maybe someone you love and dear, maybe your co-worker, maybe your neighbor, and maybe just people you know you deal with and your heart just touches them. I am not going to put smoke on this. The Bible says many go the broad way that leads to destruction. Don't let anybody ever tell you everybody's going to get saved. We've had everybody tell us to go. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, that his deeds may be made manifest, now watch this, that they are wrought in God. Now one of the things that will happen if you're saved, you love the Lord, you want to do right, God will use the Bible, preaching, you say, now you see that thing in your life? You're filthy. You're vile. Now what are you going to do about it? Now you have two options. Not me, Lord. Oh, it's only a little. I don't do it all the time. You make excuses, I'm trying to say. That's not going to bless you. Or you say, God, yep, you're right, it's true. I, 
If I confess my sins, Lord God, you're able to just to forgive my sins. I am sorry. I put that under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Help me next time. Help me in the battle. Help me put the sword, sharpen it up, and put that shield on right. For when it comes to my sins, you're in light. You want to do right. And you want God to notice that sunspot and show you. One of the greatest things, if you're ever alone, there's no one around you, you can't sleep at night. And this is something I do. You say, God, no one around. Is there anything that's displeasing you in my life right now? And I guarantee you, your heart is searching. You want the light. He'll speak to you. He'll show you what's bothering him, what's irking him. And we're all, again, about light. Light is king. Man rejects. 3.16. John 3.16. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I can never read that verse now slow. It's like, that's the verse I open up in the street ministry. What is John 3.16? Why is God so wicked? Why did He let the babies die? Why is He letting those forest fires in, in Oregon and California go? Why did He allow that tsunami? Why? John 3.16 is God's part for your salvation. That's what God did for you to be saved. And then 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. He gives a description of that light and what it does. And He gives you the attitude of man whether to believe it or not to believe it. Why won't my uncle get saved? I have witnessed to him. I have given him gospel tract. And he died unsaved. Because he enjoyed his sins and did not want the light. Plain and simple. It's not God's fault. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have yeah. everlasting life. That is the answer to how cruel God is. And how cruel God is is what He done to Jesus Christ. From the time that the garden to Calvary. God is not cruel. And man's reaction, John 3.36. There's only two reactions that man has to John 3.16. He that believeth on the Son has everlasting life. That's belief. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see light, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. That's hell. So you either, in account of John 3.16, you either believe or you believe not. There's no middle ground. There's no purgatory. There's no uh, fruitful land. There's no paradise. With John 3.16, it's either you believe and you get life, for I am the way, the truth, and the life, or you believe not and you will not get the truth because you're darkened. You don't want it. You're not going to get the life because the life comes by Jesus Christ. And in Romans 6.23, God did His part. John 3.16. That's God's part. Romans 6.23 is man's part. Romans 6.23 is what man does. The wages of sin is death. There's man. He sins. He dies. If he dies not believing, he gets the wrath of God. If he dies believing, he gets life. And even in the state of death, the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. There is that gift. There is that way before you die. So God sent His only begotten Son because we're sinners. Jesus came. Jesus became that light. And that light shows us to God. 
man before he dies has an option to believe it or believe not. Doing what the scriptures say. A man has where the wages of sin dies. So, the little baby dying, the earthquakes, the tsunamis, the tornadoes, is not God, it's our sin condition that kills us, that wounds us. And before we die, we are to reject or to receive what God has done, His part. And when we receive it, we get light. When we reject it, we get darkness, continue in darkness, to move about in darkness. Light and dark.